What are the best games on the Atari 2600? Often we hear Pitfall, Pitfall 2, Missile Command, Hero, Kaboom, River Raid, Yars Revenge, Adventure, Space Invaders, and Asteroids. It's a fun topic for us old nerds, and over the years, across many discussion boards and YouTube videos, we have created lists that rank our favorites. There's even a big list of about 250 games on the Atari Age forums that people have been voting on for over a decade. I agree with the rankings I see on the internet, except when it comes to one game. This game I have always contended to be the best game on the system. One whose gameplay is miles beyond what the other games have to offer. It's a game that remains the most playable of the 2600 library today, in my opinion. Yet it ranks only around number 25 on most of those lists. I'm not saying this game's the best just to be contrary or to get attention, or because I'm blinded by nostalgia of some memory I had as a kid. And I don't think my love for the game is because I have certain preferences that are different than other people's. I just think there are blind spots within the gaming community, and certain games, for certain reasons, get misunderstood or missed altogether. So in this video, I'm going to explain what makes this title a remarkable game, I'm going to address seven criticisms launched against it, and I'm going to do some direct comparisons between this game and some of those other games that are highly ranked. I'm hoping by the end of this video, I will have convinced Atari 2600 fans to sit down and give this game a deeper look than what they have given it before. Open your heart. So what game is Kevin talking about? It is Megamania. A 1982 space shooter designed by Steve Cartwright from Activision. Cartwright! What you do is shoot all the objects on the screen, and once they're all gone, a different set of objects appear. This keeps happening for eight waves, and after that, the objects repeat themselves, but with a different set of patterns and a harder difficulty. Per the manual, this is a space nightmare. You are dreaming these events up. So the things you are shooting are silly things like cookies and bow ties and your ship looks like the Enterprise. Or some people think it looks like some of the other ships from the Star Trek universe. The energy bar at the bottom is basically a time limit. When it runs out, you die. But once you clear a wave, it converts the excess energy to points. If you play on the default game variation, your missiles are guided. As they shoot up the screen, they move in the direction your ship moves. Bear in mind, I'm capturing this footage on a Retron 77, so the game looks slightly different than it does when you play it on the 2600. Now let me tell you what makes this game shine above its competition. First, let's establish something I called variance progression. I made that term up just for this video, and this is what it is. Most 2600 games do not have a true ending. They just keep going until you lose all your lives. Typically, there are stages, and as long as you stay alive, those stages keep looping over and over again. Programmers don't want the player to get bored with all that repetition, so they usually do something to make the stages different as you progress. The colors change, maybe new enemies appear, stuff like that. That's what I mean by variance progression. We'll call it VP for short. VP not only tries to keep you from getting bored, it rewards you for getting further. You sometimes want to keep playing just to see what the next stage looks like. One common way VP is done is by increasing the difficulty. The enemies get faster, they get more numerous, and their projectiles speed up. One of the worst cases of VP is Laser Blast. In fact, it has no VP in my opinion. It's just the same exact board over and over again. As you can probably guess, the game I think that has the highest VP is Mega Mania. Let me put it this way. The first stage is hamburgers flying to the right. The second stage is cookies coming down slowly in a long zigzag. Then it goes to bugs going to the right, tires coming down in a slow zigzag, diamonds going to the right, irons methodically coming straight down, bow ties going to the right, dice coming straight down. So right away there are eight waves of varying sized enemies with different colors and about five different patterns. But then the cycle repeats and now the patterns are different. The hamburgers now stop and dash, stop and dash and so forth. The cookies are just devastating now, they really really want to kill you, as do the tires, but in much shorter strides. The space dice now go diagonally. So that's a total of 16 waves of varying elements. But wait, there's more. On wave 17, the hamburgers are back again. Now they shoot faster bullets. And the cookies rain down in a hellish frenzy. They bring the death. In a different pattern once again. 
and the tires are crazier than ever. And just look how deadly the dice are now, you only have moments to shoot your way out. For the fourth cycle, it's hard to see any differences in the hamburgers, but the cookies and tires are different yet again. But this is where I normally start to die a lot, and I don't think I've ever made it to the fifth cycle, so I don't know what lies beyond. But I'm gonna keep trying. It's a long point to make, but I believe Mega Mania has the highest variance progression on the system, and I think I proved it to you just now, with wave upon wave of differing enemies that have different patterns and different colors. I'll compare the VP to other games in a little bit. Did you know, in 2009, Activision released a reimagined version of Mega Mania on the Wii? It was on the minigame compilation called Arcade Zone. Many of the same enemies are there, but they have been altered to make them look more like spaceships. Also, some of the patterns have been shuffled. Bow ties now come down like the irons did in the original game, and the irons now behave like the tires. Is it as good as the original? No, but it's not horrible. Actually, I don't really know, because I haven't played it and don't have a clue what Mega Mania is. My husband asked if I could read this part to break up the monotony of the video, so I said yes. Back to him. Let's talk about something else that's remarkable, and I think by now you may have noticed. The number of enemies on the screen is exceptionally high. I think I counted 15. There's some 2600 games that have more, but I don't believe those enemies are as large as these, so I think it's worth notating. I also like the way the enemies wrap around the screen, it adds some strategy. If they go off the right side, they appear on the left. If they go off the bottom, they appear at the top. A lot of times you really need to know where it's going to reappear on the other side of the screen. I know there's games like Galaxian where the enemies reappear at the top. I just feel in this game it's more of a strategic element than it is in others. Another thing I love about this game is how tight the controls feel. The default guided missiles are so precise, you can sometimes do this. It's almost like a rhythm game in some ways. You get into a zone and your instincts kick in, and the precise controls help you do that. If you change the game mode to straight missiles, it does not work as good. So if you play this game, just stick to the guided missiles. All in all, my opinion is that Mega Mania never gets old. It exceeds all other space shooters on the Atari in every conceivable way. Will you open your heart? The enemies are varied, numerous, and move in a variety of patterns, keeping the gameplay fresh over a long period of time. I keep coming back to experience it, and I keep trying to beat my high score. So let's compare Mega Mania directly to some other games, starting with Space Invaders, a game that ranks very high in various top 10 lists. On that Atari age list I spoke of, it's number 6, and Mega Mania is number 25. I disagree with that disparity, because I think Mega Mania blows Space Invaders out of the water. In Space Invaders, the enemies move in the exact same pattern every single wave. Sure, as you progress, they start closer to the ground, and as you shoot them up, they start to speed up a little bit. But for the most part, the gameplay is the same, wave after wave. I realize there's a few elements in the game that Mega Mania doesn't have, like the shields at the bottom of the screen, and the hamburger that goes across the top. But overall, Mega Mania just has better gameplay, in my opinion. I know what some of you are saying, but Kevin, Space Invaders is historic, and it's a lot older than Mega Mania. I agree with that. I'm not saying that Mega Mania did anything new, I'm just saying it did it better. I enjoyed Space Invaders quite a bit when I was a younger kid, and I still do today, but I just get a lot more enjoyment out of Mega Mania, both now and when I was a kid. Another game that usually gets ranked higher is Demon Attack. Now, I will say the variance progression on Demon Attack is very high. The enemies vary in the way they look in wave after wave. They have a lot of detail too, which I appreciate. However, they exhibit mostly the same patterns of behavior throughout the game. Just the cookies themselves in Mega Mania have more varied patterns than all the enemies in Demon Attack combined. I love Demon Attack, but I just believe Mega Mania is categorically better. Other top games that are somewhat comparable are Centipede and Millipede. Those two have a good amount of variance progression, just not as much as Mega Mania. Enemies increase their speed, but they don't vary much in their patterns when compared to Mega Mania. And I would argue that Centipede and Millipede are a lot more chaotic, while Mega Mania is a lot more controlled. When I die in Mega Mania, it feels like it's my fault. But when I die in Centipede, it sometimes feels like it was because there was too much chaos to keep up with. Comparison with other great games is hard to do. Is Mega Mania better than Missile Command? Than Junior Pac-Man? 
Is it better than Yara's Revenge? Than River Raid? I think it is because I feel I get more out of each Mega Mania gaming session than I do those other games. I mean, you go 25 waves into Mega Mania and you're still seeing different things. But if you go 25 waves into Yar's Revenge, what happens? I think it's just basically a lot of the same that happens over and over again. Bear in mind, most people do like Mega Mania. They just don't think of it as a top tier game like me. I scoured the internet, looked at reviews and comments, and found a very small handful of people that agree with me, saying it's the best game of all time and so forth. But not too many. So what did everyone else not like about the game? For one thing, they don't like the things you're shooting at. Cookies, bugs, and bow ties, and stuff like that. Those kind of objects don't make sense to them, or they feel it's too silly. I can kind of infer from their opinions that they expect games to have spaceships as enemies, or robots, or something like that. Well, as I mentioned before, the game takes place in a dream. They even put it in parentheses on the cartridge itself. So they knew people thought the game was silly. Odd things happen. So yes, cookies are silly, but there are many other silly things in other top tier games like giant scorpions, buckets of water that you use to catch bombs with, ghosts that you can eat, and people riding giant ostriches. The 2600 is a silly place. If someone went back and switched Mega Mania to have spaceships, I don't think it would make the game better, because its greatness comes from all the other aspects I've been talking about. In fact, it might make the game worse if every wave was just a different type of spaceship. I think Steve Cartwright chose the Dream World as the setting because it freed him up to create some unique enemies. Cartwright! Sometimes people just don't know what the enemies are and they seemingly dock points because they don't understand what they're shooting at. I can kind of understand if you're not sure what you're shooting, you, you kind of get confused and you're a little bit distracted, but everyone should know regardless of what the enemies are, they're trying to kill you, so all you need to do is shoot them. That's the core of the game, and it would not be any different whether or not you are shooting familiar or unfamiliar things. The other twist on this theme is that the enemies don't look like what they're supposed to be. The hamburgers look like UFOs, the space dice look like asteroids. But does visual accuracy matter on the 2600? Adventure on the Atari 2600 is awesome. Just look at these ducks. Those aren't ducks, they're dragons. Well, at least I have this arrow I can kill them with. That's not an arrow. It's a sword. What? I've been tricked! My whole life is a lie! Another complaint is that there are spots on each side of the playfield that you can't move into, even though the enemies can. It's an invisible wall. The thing is, this is actually a pretty common thing on the 2600, and in Mega Mania, just like the other games, you get used to it. In fact, I wasn't consciously aware of the invisible wall until I read a recent comment about it. I totally forgot about that fact. I'm just so used to the game and I don't find the walls unfair. Another complaint is that you get unfairly trapped by the enemies. Yeah, you can get trapped by the enemies that swoop down, but your goal needs to be to blast a hole through them so you don't get trapped. It's sometimes easier said than done, but it's a great feeling when you do blast your way through. Plus, you get a lot of extra lives in this game, so even if there are some unfair deaths, you can make up for it by getting a lot of points. In fact, dying can earn you extra points, since it refills your energy gauge every time you die so you're more likely to get a larger bonus at the end of the wave. A related complaint is that the enemies kill you because their movements are unpredictable. I'll just say that as you play, you will learn their patterns. Those patterns might be more crazy than other games, so it'll take longer to memorize them. You just have to put some time into it and it'll be worth it in the end. I've seen another complaint that the screen is black. I'll just say the same thing I've said about the other complaints. Uh, there's a lot of games on the 2600 that have a background like that, and including some of the top tier games like Berserk, Space Invaders, Centipede, and Demon Attack. Another complaint is that there's not enough game variations. Space Invaders has 112 variations, but Mega Mania only has four. I get that, 112 is incredible and should automatically put Space Invaders in the Hall of Fame. But Mega Mania does have a lot of variation, it's just not spread out into different game modes. It's spread out through the main game. Variation is the main aspect of the game. Now for the last complaint, and that is Mega Mania copied another game. The game in question is an arcade game called Astro Blaster.
I don't really understand why this is a critique. I love Mario 2 on NES. It's so fun. Did you know that's just a reskin game? They took Doki Doki Panic and put Mario characters into it. What? I've been betrayed! All games are derivative of something else. I don't care what route it took to get to my screen, as long as I'm having fun playing it while it's on my screen. And that's what it comes down to, having fun. I have fun playing Mega Mania, even 40 years after its release. And I hope you had fun watching this video. If you don't really know much about this game, I suggest you give it a try. If you have played the game in the past, give it another try. And let me know how that goes. And that's all I had today. I appreciate you watching. May your games make you happy and smart, and may people respect you for playing them. So long, everybody.